Well, it looks like I've fallen in love with Prismacolor again, everyone. <laughs> everyone welcome back to South Park Creative this is Jane I know it's been a little while since I've done a review or basically had any voice content to this channel I've just sort of backed away and worked on other projects but I will continue to create here on YouTube so this particular video is kind of a fluke actually I didn't really I didn't plan on having this review However, I tend to move creatively through my intuition and I just got inspired to do a review on the Prismacolor Collie Race pencils. Now, these have been around for a while, quite a while actually, and fun fact, they used to be owned by Faber-Castell. I'm not sure, I didn't do my history report on this, but uh, eventually they sold the name to Prismacolor. So these are known for being erasable colored pencils and they come in 24 colors maximum. So I've got them in this cute, cute, super cute bag. Um, got this at a thrift store. It was $1.50 and then I realized there was a tag on it that said Estee Lauder, so that's pretty cool. So I've got them in here. I decided to use these recently for a sketch and we'll get to that in just a second. Here are the fun facts about these particular pencils. One, they are hexagonal. Two, they have an eraser, a nice little pink eraser, just like your school number two pencils had back in the day in grade school. They are wax-based. However, unlike the Prismacolor Premier Soft Core, they're a little bit harder and um, they produce wonderful gradations of color. You can layer them and they layer so well, oh my goodness. Uh, as far as color goes, uh, they're very vibrant, just like the Soft Core colored pencils are. Uh, as many of you know, I rose a big stink over Prismacolor Premier Soft Core pencils last year. And it became a big thing. And so it's kind of surprising to fall back in love with the Prismacolor brand. So <laughs> I'm not completely against Prismacolor. And in fact, I, I love the art sticks as well and their new pastels. So really the only particular pencil that I do not use are the modern, modern made Prismacolor Soft Core Premier colors pencils so they've got all the classic colors and they do match up with those soft core premier pencils as well so you've got your same colors like grass green rose you've got um, vermilion scarlet red you know canary yellow so taking a look at these <clears throat> From the color selection, there's quite a bit of green. There's three greens. There's not really too much as far as yellow. Uh, this is a Faber-Castell original yellow. There's canary yellow, which is kind of like a cadmium shade. It would have been nice to have a little bit more of a lemon yellow, maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. The, my only complaint with these pencils, though, is that they only have 24 colors. It would be wonderful if they had the 150 in the color race. Now, I understand they're made to be sketching pencils. They're not made for finished art. However, what if they were used for finished art? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I did this sketch, quote unquote, of Sherilyn Finn as Audrey Horn, as you may know from Twin Peaks. And that new TV show is now back on and I freaking love it. And I love it as much as I used to love it back in the 90s. So I got back into Twin Peaks. I decided I was gonna do a finished piece of work, but I got so into these particular pencils that I just ended up using the light blue and the scarlet red with a little bit of Tuscan red in there for her lips because she had some signature lips. This particular scene I really liked from the diner where she was kind of reminiscing romantically with Agent Cooper in mind buying a cup of coffee. So here she is kind of, you know, circling the coffee cup and being all dreamy teenager and whatnot. So we've all been there a little bit. And I really found it easy to shade because these pencils are hard enough to layer very well without being scratchy. So they have a nice balance between being able to work with them and have them bridge the gap between fine art and sketching, if that makes any sense. Because this particular piece, I wasn't originally going to keep it this way, but I found that it had such a charm to the look itself, the way that these pencils produced nice cross-hatching gradation. So I just decided to keep it this way. And what's nice about it is that even though I was going to add some darker tones, and I might do that later with the indigo and whatnot, 
I just went into Photoshop, scanned it, and did an auto tone on it, and it kind of took care of the vision that I had for it. So really, that's all I had to do. So I really enjoy these pencils a lot. And in fact, they've kind of become my new go-to pencils because originally I, I just sketched out my work in 4H pencils, which is kind of what I was taught to do back in college, and it was just a habit that stuck with me over the years. Also, an advantage of these is that while they're not very many color selection, as far as the collection itself, you can get some of these by the dozen on Amazon. Like this particular one is the non photo blue which is perfect for comic book artists and just those who want to sketch and then scan it and not have their lines scanned in. So if you want to work over it and then sketch over it with a darker color or whatever you choose to do, though it's really nice to have. Now the non photo blue is not included as far as I remember with this collection of 24. I mean, it's, it's a decent, well-rounded collection. I would love to have more colors, Prismacolor. I know I dissed you, but you know what? I still love you for this. And the big question is how well do they erase? I can tell you right now that they erase fairly well and fairly clean, and they even erase pretty well on black paper. I, uh, I recently completed this ink drawing of Anubis. I don't know if you can see, but I've got some lines here from the white pencil that I used, especially up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase the rest of it and see what you think. But you can still, as long as it's not too heavy handed whenever you erase on the black paper, it works pretty well, I think. I like using this better than the white charcoal pencil. Cause that way it doesn't smudge. So as long as you don't use a heavy hand on sketching it on top of the black paper and erasing it with a light hand, you're, you're good to go. It'll work really well. And that's that. So, but just to confirm, we will erase some of these colors. So I may take back just a little bit of what I said about them erasing really well. <laughs> um, I did not have this experience whenever I worked with the non-photo blue. The non-photo blue actually erases very, very well. However, the other colors, especially if you're using a heavier hand to shade, they're gonna be hard to erase. You can definitely look into solving this problem with getting an electric eraser, which is better for picking up color. So let's see if this particular color here, this indigo blue, it's probably one of the deepest colors. We'll see what we can do here. Well, I mean, it picks up more color than the eraser did that's on the pencil. So there's, there's that difference there. It can help a little bit. It'll probably get enough erased for you to rework things over. However, if you're using these for not just sketching, but for fine art, it's gonna be fantastic for you, I think. And I, I believe, like I said, I think there's a charm to creating something and leaving it be as a particular look, which has an unfinished look, if that makes any sense. So there you have it. One last quick thing I want to note, there was some breakage with these colored pencils, so I do recommend using an electric pencil sharpener to reduce breakage. It seemed to do the best with the electric sharpener. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. There will be some future videos containing watercolor pencils and some other techniques, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you next time. Paint, draw, and open that third eye, everybody.